All right, everybody. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of work on a Wells Gardner K7000 chassis board. Okay. Uh, the first thing we're gonna be doing because there is a lot we have to actually do to this board, unfortunately. But as you can see from here, this neck board socket is pretty much toast. Look at that charring on there. That's horrible. We, I, I cannot allow myself to reuse this socket. It just would not be the right thing to do. Uh, we got a lot more that we have to do to the actual chassis board itself. So there's going to be more videos about it. Uh, one of the next ones we'll probably do is how to replace a flyback. Because, take a look at this. Somebody decided to splice one of these little cup sockets for the high voltage anode. And I, I should have filmed it before, but they just twisted the wire together, as you can see here, bent it, and electrical taped it. And I'm sorry, when you're talking about high voltage, like tens of thousands of volts, 10, 20, possibly 30,000 volts coming through, that is not something you should be doing. And it doesn't surprise me that the guy I got this uh, monitor from, this thing failed on him within a couple of weeks, and it's probably due to besides a bad socket and a terrible job of connecting an anode cup to it uh the flyback is trash the caps need to re be replaced and the horizontal output transistor is completely shot too uh so i have a replacement socket it's not brand new i stole this socket off of another board that's a parts board all right and it's from a k7000 and the numbers on both these sockets actually match they're identical they will work perfectly fine i don't think i can focus it in so you can see the number but the number for this is 78-3394 it's the same as this one right here the same pin out same everything so we're going to remove this socket and replace it with this socket right here and then, like I mentioned, in the future video, we're going to replace the flyback. I have a new, a brand new Wellsuit Gardener K7000 flyback. It's smaller physically than the original flyback, but most things that are made in modern day times, you can say, are going to be much smaller because of our technology advancements. Um, and I also got a capacitor kit for the chassis as well. And we'll do a cap kit on this. I don't have the horizontal output transistor pulled out to show you, but I already had one in stock. It's a 1398. So we're going to replace that as well. And hopefully that takes care of all the problems. If not, we'll test further and find the other issues that have come up. <laughs> but the first thing we're going to talk about and do is replacing this neck board socket because again it's all charred to hell so let's get it replaced first step to doing this we need to remove this wire that's from the flyback okay and just as a note even though when we put the new socket in we're not going to be replacing this wire back into the new socket because the new flyback ugh, excuse me comes with a new grounding wire so there's no reason to worry about putting this back in because when we remove the flyback, this wire here will be eliminated and a new one will be installed off of the new flyback. But there's a tab right here that actually locks this wire into place. So what we're going to do is take a flat blade screwdriver and we're going to very, very carefully, well honestly since this socket's bad, who cares about being careful, right? But you know, if let's say you had to do it without replacing the socket, you're going to carefully pop this tab right here, and then this thing will pop up. Let's see if I can't get it to pop up for you. Of course, now it's not going to work for me. All right, like that. See that? It slides up just like so. It's a locking tab that locks that wire in place. So once you get this open, all you got to do is take this wire and just pull it straight out. And that's it. Now, we can go ahead and remove the socket. 
since this socket is junk and we have no use for it at all what I'm gonna do is similar to like when you go to remove an IC chip I'm gonna go around to each of these legs and I'm just gonna cut them with my angle cutters okay the only one you have to remove or desolder to get the socket completely out is that grounding pin which is right there that ground pin right there but all we're gonna do for that is once we get all these legs cut is hold on to the socket oops sorry about that heat this pad up so the solder melts and just pull the socket right out okay then after that we'll go around to each individual leg hold on to the opposite side with a pair of needle nose pliers heat up the pad and then just pull the tabs through and go through and remove all the solder all the way around again I don't have a desoldering gun yet so I'm still using my desoldering braid uh, you're not gonna see all of this on the video because I've done this before especially with ICs so it's gonna be the same idea but basically we're gonna go around and we're gonna cut all these legs as close to the socket as we can so that we have plenty of leg material to grab onto with our needle nose pliers to be able to pull it out now uh, sometimes when you use those needle noses now this mainly affects like small pads like you're taking a resistor off or things like that but uh, sometimes the heat distribution with your iron to the pad gets messed up because you have a large amount of metal holding onto the leg so it doesn't always uh, melt your pad or melt the solder on the pad you may have to get something thinner to hold on to it uh, I have these super tiny tweezers that I sometimes use for stuff like that I don't know where they are offhand they might be on top of another game that I was working on but regardless the needle nose pliers should work just fine for this because the pads are actually quite large. Uh, now, you saw I got all those cut. So the next step is we need to get that piece uh, liquefied. And what I'm going to do is just to save time, I'm going to go ahead and take my iron and I'm going to add a little bit of fresh solder to it because this is all ground right here, all right? So in all reality, we need a lot of heat in order to make this thing melt properly. So we'll get some fresh solder on there to make it easier to melt it. As you can see, it's already kind of being like a pain in the butt. And that's because we're talking about a ground plane here. Alright, so I got plenty of new solder now, so that's perfect. What I'll do is I'll grab a hold of the socket on the opposite side. And then, while I heat this up, I'll carefully try and wiggle this socket off. Oop, look at that, it just popped right off. Perfect. I couldn't ask for anything better. See, there it is. And you can see right there, look how charred that is. That's terrible. And it's hard to see on my terrible, terrible camera, but some of that plastic in there is actually kind of melted. So... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this has a lot of issues when it comes to any kind of like convergence and other types of things like colors and whatnot. So we're going to get rid of this. If you see something like this, it's not worth your time. Junk it. So that's gone. Now, the next step, like I said before, we're basically just taking our needle nose pliers. We're going to grab a hold of any of the legs, it doesn't matter because you're going to do it with all of them anyway. Hold on to it, you'll flip it over, and then we're going to have to try to desolder them. Now, these may not melt right away, we may have to add some solder. Oh, look at that, that one's coming out. Oh, it almost came all the way out. Oh, it did. Alright, that came out. Uh, I just obviously loosened my grip up on my needle nose so it didn't. you couldn't see it. But there you go. That first leg is out of there. Then when that's done, we're going to take our desoldering braid and we're going to clear that pad up. Just like so. Again, you can use a solder pult or a solder sucker 
to do the same thing. There we go. It's all cleaned up. And since we're here, we'll go ahead and do this one real fast. Because this one's going to require more heat in general because of being a ground plane. Let's see if I can actually get it connected there. Ah, of course, it's going to be a pain in the butt for me. Okay, I'll just do that one off camera, just like the others, because screw it. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to make you sit through that. You already know the process. It's the same as this. It's just going to take more time because we got a huge plane of ground that we need to heat up equally in order to make that pad melt. I'll do the rest of these off camera and clear them up. And then we'll go ahead and start to install our new socket. Okay, as you can see here, I've got all the pins removed, and i got all the pads cleared up. I probably could have cleared them a little better, but honestly, this is just fine. The next step is to put our new socket in. Now again, it's not a brand new socket. It's a used, pulled socket, but it works great, and it's in actually excellent condition. So, this should work just perfectly fine. When you get a brand new one of these, the legs are going to be perfectly straight. When you get one that you pull, you may have some bends in your legs and stuff, so you have to straighten these out a little bit. And if that happens, whatever. Just take the time, bend them straight, and when you go to put it in, if some of them aren't lining up, then you can take like a flat blade screwdriver or your needle nose pliers and just gently push the legs into the socket. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this placed in. Oh, look at that, fit right in. That's perfect. And it's the, exact, it's the same socket, same size, same, uh, the neck tube. There, there's different diameters, and this particular board is a 29 millimeter. Uh, the best way to look that up is to look up the specific monitor you're working on and see if you can find a manual for it. I actually happen to have a manual for the Wells Gardner K7000 that goes through all the details and information about this. That's why I know this is a 29mm, because it says it in the manual. Um, but basically, our next step is we want to carefully flip it over, and we're going to take a little bit of solder paste, okay? Just like anything else that we've worked on before, put a little solder paste on, and then solder in one or two of your legs so it holds it in place. And you're not fully soldering it in. You're just putting a little dab of solder on just to kind of tack it there. And I'm going to take some of the easier legs, like this one right here. And then, oh, let's go with this one because it's a pretty small trace. So it shouldn't take very much heat. Okay, so we got that. What I like to do is I'll take my solder, as you can see on the screen to the left here, and I will take my iron while holding my part or socket in place with my finger, and I'll add a dab of solder right on the tip of my solder, uh, soldering iron, and I'll come over here and I'll add that solder to each leg. Just a little bit, you don't need a ton. You just basically need it to kind of hold it in spot. Sometimes it takes a few little dabs of solder. It all depends on the size of the pad and, you know, how much solder is normally going to be in there in general. Okay, so now it's in place. That socket's not coming out. It's flat and flush. We're good to go. So, now what we'll do is we're going to go around and add solder paste to the rest of these uh, legs, okay? And it don't take very much. It's just a little dab. In all honesty, it's just a little dab. little dab will do ya, kind of thing.
And you don't have to cover the complete pad either. You just need a little something. And like I mentioned in previous videos, this solder paste, it's a flux basically. Like think about it like that. It helps the solder flow into the pad. I apologize for all the the sniffles and stuff. I'm still not completely like better from the cold that I've had. Okay. Now from here, we can go ahead and start soldering. Remember, don't solder the two tack points you chose. You want to go and do those ones last. So we'll start with this big ground plane up here. Get this soldered into place. This takes a little bit more time and heat. This is the whole ground plane being larger. All right, that was pretty decent. All right, so we'll move on, and we'll do the rest of these, just like so. Remember, these are much larger pads, so you're gonna be using more solder than you would be if you're doing like a traditional transistor or a resistor, or anything of that nature. And you still want to be careful about the amount you put on. Putting on too much could cause the solder to flow on the opposite side of the board and push up on your socket, which could give you a bad connection. And you don't want any of that. So, just be careful, take your time, and add just enough to make a nice good solder joint. Remember in the how to solder video, you kind of want a nice little cone of solder. You don't want a blob of solder on there. You want a nice little cone. Sorry that I'm blocking your view here. I just got to get a little tab that I missed. Now that I got those in, I can go ahead and get the spots that I tacked. Get them filled all the way in with their solder. Just like so. Okay. So we'll take a look. It's looking good. It's not flow through the other side. Everything's in good shape. It's flush with the board. And our solder actually looks pretty good. It's not bad. Is it A plus? No. But it's definitely going to work. That's the key. They're not blobs. They're little like pyramids or cones of solder. And they're holding strong. Now again, since we use flux or the solder paste, we want to make sure we take a little bit of... Uh, 91 to 95 percent isopropyl alcohol on a old toothbrush that you're never going to use again and clean this all up okay we just want to get it all cleaned up try and be semi-professional with this you know get it clean don't let any of that sticky residue stay left afterwards because remember Rubbing alcohol is going to evaporate on its own because of the way it's made. Uh, but if you're impatient like me, you can most definitely go ahead and take a piece of paper towel and just give it a little bit of a dab dry. Just kind of dab it. Don't wipe it because then you're going to start tearing the paper towel with the sharp legs and stuff. Okay, there we go. We're all cleaned up. Now, I will admit, I can tell there are, let's see here, there are two legs, or a few legs. There's a couple legs here that I need to just add a little extra solder to because there's a little hole that built up. Even though I don't have the paste on, it's fine because we have such fresh solder on here that it's gonna fill in those little holes no problem. Okay, there's four in total. 
my bad. I thought there was only two. Just notice these ones over here have a small little hole that didn't quite fill in all the way with the solder. Alright, cool. So those are done. As you can see, we got some decent solder on them. There's no holes, they're solid. And they're not flowing through the opposite side, which is what you want, okay? And that's it. That's how you replace a neckboard socket. Now, at this point, if you weren't to replace, if you were not going to replace your flyback like we're going to do on this board, you would want to release this tab, flip it up, then you'll take your wire and you'll push it into this hole, okay? Just like that. And you push the tab back down and it'll lock that wire into place, that grounding wire. But, since we're replacing the flyback with this unit, I'm not going to go through that with this because there's no point. We will do that when we replace the flyback on the next video. And then I'll show you how to, you know, finish this piece up essentially. But other than that, that's how you do it. That's how you replace your socket on a neck board for a CRT monitor. Thanks again for watching. I hope you learned something or enjoyed the video at the very least. And I'll see you on the next one so we can get this flyback done and get the rest of this dang chassis board done. So we can put it back in my game and see if it works. So have a great night guys and we'll see you on the next one.